Joining us now with reaction, we have attorney, Harvard professor Alan Dershowitz, along with author, legal commentator, Chairman, uh, co uh, Chairman uh, Horace Cooper is with us. Good to see you both. Um, we've known each other a long time, Professor, a long, long time. And right. as I see the size of the crowds, not just in New York, but in Paris, the, we, the, the things that we have heard all week uh, in Australia, in Great Britain, worldwide, and there are other cities in the United States. The, what we've heard out of academia, the silence in some cases have been deafening to real virulent anti-Semitism. Um, I'll be honest, Professor, I don't often get shocked, but I did not think that we would see this at this time in our lifetime. I want to get your thoughts. You're, ab you're absolutely right. This happened once before in 1939 in New York City, in the neighborhood I live in, just down the block from where these demonstrations occurred, 100,000 Americans wearing Nazi uniforms and doing Nazi salutes, praised Adolf Hitler and supported him. In Madison Square Garden, 20,000 people showed up to hear pro-Gestapo speeches. Uh, so it's happened before. It happened in Paris. It happened in Australia. But nobody imagined it would happen again. And what we saw out explains to me for the first time in my long life, I now understand Holocaust than I People deny the Holocaust in the face of the most massive evidence. And many of the people in this crowd are Holocaust deniers. They're genocide deniers. They're people who deny what is absolutely in front of them. Now, you know, universities have a hard time because they believe in free speech. But I have one rule for Harvard and every other university. Just treat the people who sign these petitions the way you would treat somebody who signed a petition supporting the blowing up of black churches, the lynching of black people, right. the throwing of bombs into a gay nightclub. Just treat them that way. They all have the right of free speech. But nobody would tolerate that kind of racist and uh, homophobic speech. And that's what we're hearing here. We're hearing Nazi <laughs> speech, with Nazi actions, and they ought to be treated as if they were members of the Nazi party wearing sweat. Let me get your take, Horace Cooper. I have to tell you, when I heard that there was going to be a national day in support of this brutal, evil, genocidal thuggery that calls itself Hamas, hey, I Horace, really I, I want to I want to jump in here. They call they want they want they have called today a day of jihad. An international day of jihad, jihad meaning holy war. I want to be very clear on that. Uh, this is not the day of rage. Uh, for some reason, the media has decided to just, you know, shift the the actual words that were used by the Hamas. I interrupted you. I apologize. Well, I just want to say I am astonished to see that there's this level of hate that exists right within the midst of us. Like the professor, I believe that if you support the burning, the gassing, the beheading of people because of their religion, you are a Nazi and I don't want to work with you. I don't want to do business with people who want to do business with you. I don't want to have any association. You may have the right to advocate the evil views that you advocate. But you should not expect to be welcomed in society. Law firms should not be, uh, welcome you. Corporate America should not welcome you. I'm particularly dismayed that there are folks who claim they're trying to look out for marginalized. Taking a baby and cutting its head off, if that's not marginalized, I don't know what it is. This behavior should yeah. never ever be condoned. How do you explain the overwhelming, incontrovertible evidence, Professor, of Hamas killing 1,300 people? Now, if you extrapolate out, I've been saying this all week, 1,300 people, you base on the population, a little over 9 million people in, in Israel. If we were to extrapolate out the percentage and, and what that would mean if America lost the same amount of people, 
proportionally based on our population. We're talking about 38,000 Americans in a day. On 9-11, we lost 2,977. We lost fewer than that, over 2,000 in Pearl Harbor. But this would be the equivalent of losing 38,000 Americans in one single day. And you just heard Sarah Carter interviewing these protesters. And they simply deny what, what video footage exists, what images exist, what evidence exists. Right. Well, I, how do you explain and, that denial? Well, I think the one thing you have to make clear is once we were attacked at Pearl Harbor, uh, Franklin Delano said we want an all-out war and we will only accept unconditional surrender. Winston Churchill said the same thing. Not to know was said the same thing. Unconditional surrender, all-out war. What we did to Berlin after the war, what we did to Tokyo after the war, Israel has the absolute right to do to Gaza City. Now, Israel has done something no other country before has ever done. It's given an opportunity for whatever innocent people there are to leave. And if they leave, fine. But if they don't leave, if they remain on their own, listening to Hamas, and Israel has a choice between allowing its own civilians to die, to be killed deliberately, or engaging in military action to end Hamas, which will result in collateral damage to innocent civilians, they should do what every country in the history of the world has ever done. Prefer your civilians, your innocent civilians, over the human shields that Hamas is using to permit it to kill your innocent civilians. So all that war, Israel wants to behave the way the United States did in Berlin and in Tokyo, and want to accept nothing but total surrender and the end of Hamas. And if there is collateral damage, the fault for that is exclusively on Hamas, who is telling its people to say and remain human shields. We'll have you back next week to do a follow-up to see if Harvard will allow me to moderate a debate between you and Cornell that West. Would... Uh, I, I tend to think they, they will say no, Professor, uh, and that would be very gutless and cowardly of them. Professor, thank you. Horace, thank you tonight. 